Hey guys, Michael here. So for this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the first project I worked on and one of the projects I'm working on now. So if you guys are new to the channel, I started coding six months ago and I've been posting monthly progress updates every month since then. So now for the first time ever, ever, I'm gonna go back and look at the very first project I worked on. Now I haven't looked at this or anything since then. So we're both in for a treat. I'm gonna be showing you guys the project and the code, but we're not gonna to spend too long in the code as that's not very fun to look at. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into it. All right, here we have it guys. The first project I worked on, making your own version of the Google homepage. Now I did this project as part of the curriculum for the Odin project. Yeah, let's play around with it now. So when you're making a website, there's a lot of things you wanna focus on. One is being responsiveness, right? That means how you can shrink the window and how everything reacts when you shrink the window. As, <laughs> as you guys can see, the, uh, the Google kind of got chopped off there. So, so responsiveness, that's an F, right? We failed that part. We did not make the Google responsive at all. However, the flex box down here with this little uh, the footer and the header, very responsive, 10 out of 10. That's an A plus right there. Good job, good job, Pass Michael. Now, I did get a little fancy, okay? If you hover this here, uh, this little search bar, look at that, look at that shadow effect. Oh my God. You hover the buttons, look at that. So we got fancy with CSS a little bit. Uh, none of the buttons work. <laughs> Everything's just for show, right? We put a little flex box up here, I think, or a grid. And uh, yeah, this is this is it, guys. This is where it all began, right here. I was so proud when I made this project. I was so happy. I was showing it off to everybody. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Let's take a look at the code now. All right, so if we take a look at the code, it's very, very simple. We have um, nothing organized. <laughs> it's all just inside the folder, right? We just threw everything in there. We have a uh, one picture for the Google logo. Uh, another picture of that magnifying glass and then a readme. What's this readme even say? For my first project, I created a non-functional clone of the Google homepage to get some experience working with HTML and CSS. While the styling isn't 100% perfect, I feel like it's pretty close. I used CSS grid for the main layout of the page and then flex for the header and footer. In the future, when I'm a little more comfortable with scalability, responsiveness, I'd like to come back and make it and make the page collapse a little better at smaller sizes. All in all, the project was about uh, all in all the project was a blast. So past Michael did actually did readmes and did a better job of doing readmes than uh, current Michael. So good job, past Michael. You you were on it with that. But that's kind of cool to see. Even back then, I struggled with uh, <laughs> responsiveness and have yet to master the uh, at media queries. Also note that the project has an HTML file. There's no JavaScript yet. I didn't know any JavaScript at this point. So there's no JavaScript in this project. It's just an HTML file and a CSS uh, sheet here, style sheet. Wow. I've been built a page with just HTML in so long. It's crazy looking at all. I kind of understand what's happening still. Like going back and reading it, I can kind of, I mean, my names for things are, are, are pretty bad, <laughs> but I kind of know what's going on, you know? I kind of get the gist of it. Not a bad first project. Now let's get to what you guys came to see. Let's get to the project I'm currently working on. All right, and this is my current project that I'm working on. It's actually a website for a business, and it is not done yet, okay? It is not complete. But even though it's not finished, I just want to show you guys where I'm at and kind of like the process that I go through when I build things. So, so this is where I'm at after six months of coding. As you see, we come to the page. We've got this nice little header at the top, company logo. And then uh, I haven't put any text in the slides yet, but you know, that's the easy part. All right, first things first, we have the carousel here with the images showing nice, clean carpeted areas. Let's make you really feel the importance of the website. You can feel that carpet is the main driving force, right? That's what I was going for at least. I don't know if I did a good job. You guys let me know in the comments below. But we have the carousel there. And then uh, we come down here. The text is still generic. Um, you know, it's kind of up to the actual owner of the business as you know what they want. 
presented and what they want said about themselves. So I leave it generic for now. I'll fill it in later. We got some more images focusing on the central theme of the website. And then this is where this is where the magic comes in. We have more specialty services. You hover that you hover them. Look at that. Oh, a little bit of box shadow. Not enough. They pop off the page just a little bit before, and then when you hover them, they get that oh so satisfying shadow. Scale up just a little bit. We come over here. Oh, oh man. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we have this little call to action down here or they can call your phone number or request a service. Uh, then we have the reviews down here. The reviews are also in a carousel that tick by themselves. So over time, the reviews will get posted in there. And then at the very bottom, we have the footer, the company logo, Facebook page, um, little image here, one of their authorizations. And then the locations right here. And then I'm gonna have a picture of the map here from Google Maps, but I don't know how to do that yet. So until I figure it out, this is kind of just like a placeholder. And then we have the hours right there. Now what's cool about this, we looked at the responsiveness from the Google page earlier, right? And there was none. Now, if we shrink this window, boop, look at that beautiful, beautiful, fully responsive page. Great experience here. Everything collapses, everything is nice and tidy. Maybe those buttons are a little too big right there, huh? I don't like the way they look at smaller screen sizes. And if you guys didn't notice, the request service button down here turns into, it turns into this footer that you see right here. That's gonna have a button that you can click to call instantly. And then obviously a phone icon is gonna go here where it says phone icon. I have the phone number for the company. And then if you make the page bigger, it's gone. All right, so now let's take a look at it from a mobile screen. So right off the bat, you see that it's responsive. Everything collapsed, nice and neat. Our nav bar has a hamburger button with a drop down menu now. So you can see everything in there. Looking good, everything collapsed nice and small. It's all into a column. Tucked away nice and neat. So we have responsiveness. Now notice something I'm gonna have to fix later. Uh, the footer menu down here, half of it's gone now. So I'm gonna have to fix the margins on that so we can actually click on the call button that's down there. And if we were to take a look at it from an iPad, it's wonderful. Everything is nice and neat and in its proper spot. All right, so the second thing that we checked on the Google page, aside from responsiveness, was functionality, right? We clicked on the buttons, nothing worked. But now we click on the buttons. Let's come down here and click on this request service button. Oh, we get a form that pops up where we can actually fill in our name, our phone number, our email, and a message. Now I haven't integrated the back end functionality for this form just yet. I'm gonna be using Firebase for that, but I'm gonna do that after the layout's done. So once that's done, you're gonna be able to submit the form and then get the necessary information. And we also have the other navs on the header, right? So let's go ahead and check out the other pages. I've been working on this for about five days now and a majority of the work has gone into the home page, but I went through and kind of built a skeleton for the entire website. So we'll just jump through the other pages real fast. We're gonna have the about page here. Now there's just an image at the top, um, some sections to plug in the info and it goes into the footer. I might change the sizes of things in the footer. I don't know if they're kind of big or not. I can't tell. What do you guys think? Footer too big? Just enough information in there, not enough. And then we have the specials. Now here, I'm gonna make some coupons for the company and then plug them in there. Obviously, I'll make this title a little bigger and add services into the services field. But like I said, this is just kind of a, a rough draft, if you will, a, a skeleton. Then we're gonna have the contact page here. Contact us, blah, blah, blah. And then the location, hours of operation, and then another small about us here another little quote right there. All these little quotes that you kind of see floating in the middle of the page, I'm gonna make those bigger and have a fancy font. And lastly, we have the fact, the frequently asked questions. I mean, this is hit or miss, not everybody's gonna need this and everybody's gonna want this, but in case they do, I'll have something, you know, ready for it. Now, one of the big things I wanted to ensure on this project was that the phone number was visible at all times. So that's why when you're at larger screen sizes, it's right here. And when you're on smaller mobile screen sizes, it's down here. All right, so my goal is to always keep the phone number present. All right, so let's take a look at the code. Right off the bat, there's a lot more going on here than there was in the first project, right? I'm using React, I'm using React Router, and I'm using React Bootstrap. 
So if you're unfamiliar with React, there's a lot of craziness going on in my code right now, right? But every section is divided into different folders and all the components for those sections are in the folders. So if we take a look at the home section here, you can see we have the home where all the components are resting in. And then we have everything that's in the home, the call to action section, the carousel, the info, the reviews. And I don't want to get too in depth into the code here because there's a lot of code, obviously. And it's not perfect yet. Um, I'm still in the building phase, so you know I'm trying things out and I'll delete something and haven't cleaned up the code yet. So I don't want to go too in depth with that. The main takeaway I want you guys to see from this is the progress, right? That's what happens in six months. That's what you can learn. Also have SAS going. If you guys don't know about SAS yet, check it out. SAS is awesome. You guys have just seen the difference between one month of coding and six months of coding. All right, you will get better. If you guys are just starting and you're struggling, you're on month two or three, consistency goes a long way. Like um, you guys saw where I was at first. That was, my Google homepage was not hot. It was not the move, it was not it. It, was, it wasn't great, all right? The project I'm working on now still isn't the best, but it is leaps and bounds better than where I was when I started. Like my understanding of everything is, has significantly increased. And it was kind of cool to go back and look at that first project and see, you know, just how far I've come. Because sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes I sit to code and I feel like I'm still a complete, like, beginner that doesn't know anything. But just looking at the differences between the two, like the two projects, the two code, everything about them, there is growth there, okay guys? So once again, if you're going through the journey, if you're learning to code, if you're struggling, doubting yourself, man, just stick with it, because it gets hard, but you will get better, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here. I don't wanna ramble on too long. Uh, if you guys have already, do subscribe to the channel, like the video if you're enjoying it, and uh, yeah, feel free to check out the other content. If you wanna see the monthly updates from month one to month six, do check those out as well. I do post the monthly update videos, once a month alongside some other content so you can see it all unfold like in real time i go into way more depth on each project and like what i covered for the entire month so you guys can follow along see what i'm doing maybe do something and who knows you might find something that helps you out well i'm out of here guys later